Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, great to have you here. And if you've been tracking with the last few weeks of content, we've been talking a lot about Linux Mint. I started off with a video talking about why I think it's such a fantastic desktop for everyday use. And in last week's video, we looked at some of the ways that I've tweaked the Linux Mint desktop to suit my own usage. And you guys seem to find this stuff kind of helpful. So in that trend, I want to continue by talking about how I've used this distribution for gaming over the last year and a bit. Uh, and what I've noticed is that while a lot of these tweaks, obviously I enjoy using Mint and I've applied here to the Mint desktop, you can use these tweaks for any Linux desktop. And that's kind of what I think is amazing about a lot of these open source tools. You can kind of use them for whatever desktop you want. So having said that, what follows is a quick curated list of tweaks and suggestions, apps and tools that you can use to optimize your gaming experience on the Linux desktop. So once again, crowdsource a little bit in the comments below in that if there is a tool that you have found really helpful in the gaming world uh, when it comes to running your favorite games on Linux, then let me know in the comments below. These are just my thoughts and experiences and you can sound off with yours. So first of all, what I wanna say is that uh, there are definitely Linux distributions out there that are better suited for gaming. And what I mean by that is that obviously the Steam Deck exists that runs on Linux and it does a great job of uh, setting up a system that works well for gaming. Now there's other ones out there. I think Garuda Linux does a great job with pre setup for games. Um, but when it comes to Linux Mint as a general purpose OS that has a lot of great stuff to offer a lot of different types of users, uh, here's a few things that you could do. So first of all, when it comes to gaming, obviously the gold standard is Steam. The fact that we have a fantastic range of games that work through Proton's compatibility layer in Steam is pretty amazing these days. What you're gonna notice though, is in my Steam layout here, it actually looks a little bit weird or a bit different. And what this is, is a simple reskin of Steam uh, called ADW or Adwaiter, the first three letters of Adwaiter, Steam GDK. You can find this little app and it just works as a little reskin of Steam to help it suit a GTK based desktop. Uh, you can customize some of these a little bit so that Steam looks more at home on your GTK based desktop. Obviously, if you're running KDE, need not apply. It is a very simple reskin and it's not like the most perfect thing ever, but if those things matter to you, fantastic. What I will say is that there is actually a big difference that you can get out of uh, the performance modes between different layers of uh, Proton compatibility, depending on what game you're running. So the gold standard is suggestion number two is pair Steam with Lutris. And this is probably one of the most simple and like level one things that you're gonna hear when running games on Linux is to utilize Lutris because it's a fantastic curated list of customizations and recommendations per game. So when you have a game that sits outside of the Steam library, but somehow connects or has to authenticate through, Lutris can help you launch that game. When it comes to having pre-configured versions of Wine or Proton, Lutris can help streamline that installation process. One particular thing that I've found very helpful when it comes to uh, getting better performance on Linux Mint specifically is twofold. First of all, I've found that by using a more recent kernel, you do get much better hardware performance if you're running more recent hardware. Now, the way that you would go about doing that on Linux Mint is if by default you have installed the standard desktop version of Linux Mint, then you'll need to go into the update manager, go to Linux kernels, hit continue, and, uh, and then choose the most recent version of the kernel that you can find. This is drawn from the Ubuntu hardware enablement stack, and they give you a much more up-to-date kernel that will then continue to update as time goes on. Um, another way around this is when you install Linux Mint, you use the Edge ISO, and that gives you more up-to-date hardware uh, enablement out of the box. So also it's worth mentioning that drivers should be present uh, and you can do that by just looking up Linux Mint and graphics drivers, it's pretty simple. But another way that you can eke a little bit more performance out of your games in Linux Mint, especially using Lutris in combination with Steam, is when you go into the configuration space, what you can do is you can enable the feral game mode. And what this game mode does is it prioritizes some of the input outputs around the game itself. It can uh, up the CPU scheduler to uh, high performance mode instead of sitting on balanced. 
uh, and it can do a few other things as well. Uh, you can definitely go and read more about the feral game mode. A few, there are a handful of games that natively support this, but it is a fantastic extra layer that can help tweak and toggle a few of the system things in the right direction to get the most performance out of your games. Now, I did run some uh, quick benchmarking around this because like you, I was skeptical about flicking a switch and actually seeing any meaningful difference. And the funny thing was that through just my testing with, uh, with Spaceship, uh, the visual effects graph demo, uh, you can see in my, uh, I'll show you a quick folder here between the benchmark results that I got in uh, the first test where I just ran it directly through Steam, uh, where you can see I've got 104 frames per second average. Um, again, the, the graphics card is okay, but it's nothing to write home about. And you can see the, the variation there between the worst and best frame rates. Then you can see once I turned, the only thing I changed was by toggling that switch to feral game mode and it increased my worst frame dip to 81 frames a second. So that brought it up almost double and it eked out a little bit more performance on the best frame rates end. So overall, I've averaged up a little bit more. Now you might be saying, oh, well, what's the difference in five frames a second, whoop to do Well, I would agree, but the difference that I actually got in the experience of it, and I don't know if this is just something unique to my hardware, if, if other people have experienced this, but something that I've noticed in gaming on Linux is that occasionally you can have these hitches where you'll have really smooth frame rates, and then all of a sudden something will be uh, like handing off to something else, and you'll get this like microsecond of a hitch where the frame rates lock up all together and then keep going. And that was very consistent for me. Titles that use the Unity engine uh, and titles that use um, and titles that use other game engines as well have done this for me. The most, uh, the most obvious example that I can think of was apart from the spaceship demo was when I was running uh, Titanfall 2 and that was getting the same sort of lockups. And what I've noticed is that by using feral game mode, for whatever reason, it completely ironed out all of those hitches. And so while the frame rate difference was not huge for me, the smooth, uh, coherent um, frame rates and the no longer getting any hitching uh, was a huge game changer. That's a bad pun. We'll carry on. Some of the other things that I've noticed uh, about the Linux gaming world that I hadn't really noticed before was that you actually have a fair bit more control over your hardware now through a lot of really helpful tools. So first of all, I found uh, Green with Envy, which is a great uh, tool to get a little bit more information about what your GPU is doing and be able to control things like fan, uh, custom fan profiles to uh, adjust when fans kick in to optimize cooling. And also you can uh, play around with and test uh, overclocking for your G for your NVIDIA GPU as well. And now I'm going to assume there must be a tool out there for the AMD equivalent, but as I've been running NVIDIA for many, many years, this is just what I'm familiar with. Um, I also found it really useful with troubleshooting uh, GPU rendering in Kden Live when I'm doing video exports or in DaVinci to see that the GPU is actually being utilized with the encoder and decoder cores in NVIDIA graphics cards. Um, so just having this data on hand is really helpful. So again, you can get all of this software uh, through FlatHub. Uh, it's very easy to install on whatever system you might be on. Another recommendation that I have is to use a, uh, especially if you're on a laptop, is to use a, a little tool called Slimbook Battery. Um, this does very similar things to what the Feral Game Mode does, except it gives you more granular control over what you're turning up when. So for example, on the, uh, on the default um, balanced power profile that most laptops will have enabled out of the box. Things like the CPU scheduling, some of the uh, some of the power inputs going to the USB ports and other things will toggle on and off and will ramp up and down depending on uh, how much demand is on the system. What I noticed is, is that by default, Linux does not scale up the performance of your hardware as quickly or as keenly as what it does on Windows. So this often would lead to uh, if I was running a game on Windows, that game would uh, that game would push the hardware on Windows and the, the fans would kick in and we'd all take it to DEFCON 4 
uh, and the game would run flawlessly. Whereas Linux would seem a lot more conservative and not push the hardware as much. What I found was that by coming in and using a tool like Slimbook Battery, which you can go and get from Slimbook's GitHub, uh, it's a tool that they bundle in with their laptops, um, which are great by the way, but uh, their tool is available. You can just install it on any Linux system. And so uh, by using this tool, it partners with a lot of older power management software like TLP that's been great for managing battery life on notebooks for years now. And it uses some of those performance flags uh, to get better performance out of your hardware. So if I'm going into a gaming mode, uh, then I enable maximum performance. And that does make a tangible difference in the frame rates and performance of, of the games that I'm running. Uh, you can set this to like auto start with your PC or log in or whatever, and you can customize on a very granular level, but it, with a really nice GUI, uh, each of these power profiles uh, and to get the most performance when you need it or to throttle things back when you don't. Uh, so all of that to say with a combination of Slimbook battery, the uh, green with MV GPU tool and uh, feral game mode, Steam and Lutris, that is a lot of gaming performance that you can get out of Linux Mint. And what I will say is that like, I mean, you can kind of see my Steam library uh, here at the moment. There is not a single one of these titles that I can't get running uh, on Linux Mint these days, which to me is phenomenal because it just wasn't the case even three years ago. Uh, the most recent edition, uh, the Halo Master Chief Collection now has anti-cheat and there seems to be some good progress being made on some of the other anti-cheats. Uh, so definitely look it up and keep an eye on it because it seems like it's something that keeps moving forward at a really decent clip. Well, that'll be all for this week. Let me know your suggestions for gaming optimizations for your Linux desktop, desktop of choice down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.